Right, reflux is the other important technique used when you're oxidizing alcohols. When you've got a primary alcohol and you're oxidizing it with acidified dichromate and you're making an aldehyde, you're only halfway there. You haven't completed the reaction. If you've got enough of the oxidizing agent, you can keep pushing it further and get to a carboxylic acid. This is what reflux does. Distillation helps you get rid of that product at the halfway stage. Helps you separate off the aldehyde. But with reflux, this is when we're going to get the full reaction to happen and collect our carboxylic acid. So we're going to start off in exactly the same way as we did before. We're going to start off with our round bottom flask. And in that, we're going to put our mixture of our primary alcohol although it doesn't actually have to be a primary alcohol. It could be an aldehyde or it could be a secondary alcohol. Both of these are done under reflux. So I'm just going to pull alcohol and then acidified H+, it's your proton, that's your acid, and dichromate Cl2O72-. That's your dichromate ion, one of the ions you should have learned already. And again, just like before, we need to heat it up. So let's get some heat down here. Doesn't matter what that heat source is. Could be a water bath, could be a heating mantle, could be a Bunsen burner. As long as it's heat, that's all we need. If you use a Bunsen burner with ethanol, chances are you might cause it to combust. That's not what you want. That's not going to cause an oxidation reaction. So when you heat it, you're going to get the reaction to happen. It's going to oxidize and the aldehyde with its lower melt to boiling point because it's just got the permanent dipole dipole forces between molecules not the hydrogen bonds that the carboxylic acid or the alcohol have the aldehyde will start evaporating off in the vapor phase now when we did distillation it went up through a tube here and then down through the condenser off to the side we don't want it to go off to the side we want it to get back in to this round bottom flask. So this time the condenser just goes straight up. It's the same, exactly the same type of condenser. So it's going to have that sleeve around it which will contain the water. The water goes in at the bottom, comes out at the top. That's just to make sure it's still flowing. And all that's filled again with cold water. So your aldehyde will continue going up here. It will hit these cold parts of the condenser and that will make it condense. Hence why it's called condenser, clues in the name. Now, it rises because it's a gas, it's lighter than air, but once it condenses and there's a liquid, it's going to come back down there. Because there's a liquid, it's dense than there. So it sinks back down into this mixture. At that point, it might get heated up again and go back up. Maybe a bit more of that will come out aldehyde, it will go back up. Or the aldehyde that falls back down into here will get oxidized even further if we've got enough of the acidified potassium dichromate. And it will become a carboxylic acid. None of this aldehyde is escaping. We're not collecting any of it down here like we do with distillation. It's just going straight back in to your reaction vessel. So all of this, by the end, will have become an aldehyde. It will have gone up through the condenser, back down, and then become a carboxylic acid. And there should be no alcohol left and no oxidizing agent left. And it will just be carboxylic acid. And we can think about how we can test for that later. Now, one of the other big differences between this and distillation is with distillation, we had a thermometer at the top because we cared about what temperature it was. Because we had to have a temperature higher than the boiling point of aldehyde, lower than the boiling point of the carboxylic acid in the alcohol. This time, we don't care how hot it gets. Anything that evaporates off, be it the alcohol, the acid, or the aldehyde, will condense back down into here. So we don't care about the temperature, but you might think, why don't we have something on top to stop it all escaping out the top? Well, it cools down enough 
so that none of the vapour should escape out the top, it should all come back down into here because this part of the reflux equipment is cold. If we put a lid on or put a thermometer in there or a bung or anything to stop anything escaping out the top, the pressure in here could build up so much it would just explode or at least cause other problems. So it's important that with reflux equipment, the top is kept open, otherwise you'd get too much pressure being built up in here. And that is reflux.